verse 2. I stuck with the theme of the night. While y'all turn into it, I'll tell y'all a little bit about Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. Um, if y'all didn't know, that scripture uh, breaks down the inheritance of Abram, which is also uh, Abraham, right? Abram was a powerful man of God, and he moved out of obedience, right? And in Genesis chapter 12 is one of the key Old Testament passages that contains what has been called the Abrahamic Covenant, right? Amen. Nearly one-fourth of Genesis is devoted to this man's life. Old Testament <laughs> work 40. He had exactly 40 Old Testament references uh, made out to Abraham by himself. No other man of God but to Abraham. Forty passages are made out to him by himself just in the book of Genesis. Let me just tell y'all people of God, um, it's not about the shouting and the speaking in tongues and the coming and dress looking like church. It's about your lifestyle. Amen. So when you think you can just come in and live what you want on the outside and you know, you get on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and got your personal girlfriend and boyfriend messages on the side. And you think you can live a double life? You can't. God sees it. You feel me? Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. Y'all got it? Now, I want everybody to have it. I want you to see it. I want the young kids to see it. Y'all need to read your word, too, because it's our kids in hell as well. Amen? Children are in hell. Age 12 is the age of accountability, so you need to read the word as well. Amen. You know, you listen to all the radio stuff and all the, you know, whip and nay nay songs and all of that. But guess what? You don't know your scriptures. No, sir. We can't afford you to be in hell neither. I'm accountable for your souls too. Amen. 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 Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. Let me read it. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Right? Verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Right? In this passage of scripture, God was talking to Abram. Abram was a man of God. He lived upright. Um... In another book, they call it the Quran, he is referenced 188 times in the Quran. They know him as being the second powerful man of God on the earth. Fact is, he's named among the most powerful men in the Bible, Abraham, because the lineage falls from Moses. Y'all know about Moses. He falls in the same lineage. Amen. With that being said, God will boast for you when you live your life right. Amen. What I mean by that is you can't live a double life and expect God to boast about you in heaven. Amen. This pulls my topic. If it's familiar, it can kill you. Amen? Amen. Tell you, one more time, if it's familiar, it can kill you. Tell your neighbor, I can't stay there no more. I got to go. I can't stay there no more. I got to go. The reason I had you tell your neighbor that is because the root word of familiar is family. Right? Just because they're close to you don't mean they're good for you. I'm talking about, I don't care if it's a pastor, a preacher, a cousin, a best friend. I don't care if it's a friend on your Facebook profile. You need to cut them off. Wow. The key thing about the scripture, how it lines up, is the fact that Abram was obedient. Yeah. One of the first commandments that God gave Abram, y'all ready? One of the first commandments that God gave Abram was to leave your family, huh? Leave the land that you went, leave the familiar place that you went, and go to another place 
and I will bless you. The promises came. I will bless you. See, the problem with us is we heard God tell us a promise, right? And then we try to move on. You know, God say, I'm going to give you a full-time position. A full, I'm going to take you out and give you full-time ministry, right? We're looking for God to give us the full-time ministry, right? But it ain't come yet. I know God told me that I'm supposed to be in full-time ministry, but it just didn't come yet. What's the problem? Then, and then look, the crazy people, they quit their jobs. God told them, yeah, I'm going to give you the promise. So then they just jump. They, God told me for a time minute, right? I look. I would tell y'all this story. We know. We know one particularly that said this same thing. We ain't gonna name no names, right? The man of God just got out of jail. This is a true story. Just got out of jail, and just got a new job. Got on parole and all of that, right? Got married. Got kids. Blessed. New job. All of that. He heard God tell him that he's ready for full-time ministry. This cat quit his job fresh out of prison, moved all the way to Georgia and told him, he said God told him he need to do five-fold ministry for a time. Long and behold, he got down there. When God do things, he do things decency and in order. You hear me? He got all the way down there, family struggling, don't know when the next payment coming. He calling people for money. He need help. Kids about to get put out of the house. Come on, man. You got to have common sense, too. Because when God told Abram to move out the land, right, there was instructions afterwards. He didn't just move out the land. The first, the first thing was obedience of moving. In my yard, I had this tree. Follow me, y'all. In my yard, I had this tree. Recently, there was a big storm. The tree split in half. I waited a few days on purpose because I wanted to see God talk to me about this situation. Right? I waited a few days. I never told my wife why I didn't cut the tree. And she said, cut the branch off. Right? She said, my wife said, cut the branch off. We need to cut it to get it off the tree because it's hanging. Right? I didn't do that. I wanted to see what God was going to do. So I waited for maybe a week to two weeks. And guess what? That branch never died. And I was trying to figure out why the branch didn't die. And it was still connected to the tree. The tree is sin. As long as you're connected to some kind of sin, it still lives in your body. So you have to cut the sin from the root. For you to be in obedience and for God to give you the blessing. The reason that God didn't give you the blessing yet is because you didn't cut it from, you didn't cut your sin from the root yet. You feel me? He can't give you the full time blessing yet because you just ain't cut it from the root. The sin was still alive. You feel me? So in other words, if the, the ex-boyfriend is still on your cell phone. Huh? If the, if the, if the ex-boyfriend is still on your Facebook profile. If the baby died, he's still on your Facebook profile. Wow. If he's still on your personal text message, you ain't call him, no. I still serve Jesus. But the fact is, he's still in your visual peripherals. Wow. Oh my God. He can't just give you the blessing yet. You ain't ready yet. The bishop then told you to stop smoking over and over again. I serve Jesus. I ask God for forgiveness, but I still got to have that cigarette. God still can't give you the blessing yet. You keep wondering why I can't get this blessing. Why I can't get this financial blessing. Well, you keep spending your money on the cigarettes. You keep implanting the, the wrong seed in the wrong place. When you plant the seed in the right place, God can give you that increase. Y'all ain't hear me. When you plant the seed in the right place, God can give you the increase of what he really wants to do in your life. But as long as you are attached as long as the branch is attached, you can't get the blessing. You can't. Let me talk about me. I ain't talking about you. I've been in church all my life. Been going to churches where the pastors ain't even living right. They stealing the people's money. They manipulating the people with witchcraft. Sitting the people on the back row because they didn't agree with the person. Come on now. 
And the funny part, as soon as I left, it was obedient to God. See, the thing is, we listen to too many pastors and we don't read the word for ourselves. Study to show thyself approved. A worker needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Bible says my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Why are we dying? Because you perish. Because you lack that knowledge. You need to see God for yourself. When you get to the gates of heaven, God ain't going to ask, what did pastor such and such say? He going to say, what did you say? What did you do? He ain't going to ask about the other man. He going to say, what did you do? Why did you stay in that land for so long? He said, be obedient and get out the land. You want to get into the land of promise with milk and honey? Many times, even Moses had to separate himself. Some people just couldn't go. Even Moses couldn't even go to the land. He saw it, but he couldn't even go. So it don't matter how chosen you feel you are. It don't matter how powerful you think you are. But you can miss out on that blessing by your disobedience. You hear me? Familiar will kill you. You up all night dealing with loneliness. But can't even talk to God about the loneliness. You got your flesh moving because you're lonely. Huh? Then you lay down and have sex out of merge. And then ask God for forgiveness after. But God, what God didn't tell you was. You missed out on the promise. Now, I may have forgave you by grace, but because you still did the sin, you missed. You still missed out on the promise land. That's true, sir. That's right. Familiar will kill you. That's right. So the same place that you fell short at before, you fell short again. And you missed out on the blessing again. That's right, sir. And then you keep asking God why I'm still single. It's because 10 years ago, you lay with somebody and you knew it was wrong. Right. Wow. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's actually right. You knew it was wrong Amen. and you did it anyway. Right. Right. And then they use the excuse, I'm human. Well, guess what? Uh. The word human is not biblical. Right. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the word told us we were put a little lower than the angels. We were to judge angels above and not beneath. I thought, I, I thought that's what the word says. So therefore, you, you're not human. Based on the government, you don't fall in the food bloodline with the rest of the animals on the planet. You were called in the image of God in the likeness. So therefore, every time you take a step back and sin, yeah, now you become human again. You have lost your superpowers. Kryptonite. Crazy thing, huh? You go to see the superheroes with your kids not even realizing you're the superhero. That's on your chest. That stands for salvation. Living holy and righteous. The more holy and righteous you get, the more powerful you become. The more you can use your discernment, which is the Superman eye beams that's right. That's right, that kill enemies upon arrival. You can fly in the sky, in the spirit realm, and bind and loose, and get the blessings that you that, that God bestowed and promised you from the beginning. Amen. But guess what? The familiar will kill you. It's time for you to delete some numbers when you leave here today. Wow. It's time for you to delete some Facebook friends Amen. that you want to see your blessings. Come on now, son. You want them to see your blessings. Wow. I thought the word said God will post for you. Yeah. Yeah. Word travels better than internet. Yeah. Did you hear about such and such that just got blessed with a new house? You don't need to boast about that. You still in the familiar? And God trying to take you to the next level? You still asking God for the blessing. Well, before you ask God for the blessing, he needs you to sacrifice some things. Yeah. Yes. He needs you to get out of the familiar of some things. It's all right to play church in front of bishop. That's right. That's right. You can play church all you want. But God ain't, ain't mocked. 
Now, even though somebody else don't see your sin, and you got your private on the side joint, <laughs> you got your private on the side joint going on, and God and, and, uh, and God didn't deal with you at that moment. But it's gonna come a time when you're gonna have to fall on your knees. And you're gonna have to return to God and ask for forgiveness. And then you're gonna have to pay for the sin that you committed. Threefold penalty to me. I, ain't you getting tired of getting penalized? Hell is full of people who believe in Jesus. Hell is full of preachers and pastors and bishops. Are you still saying that I'm sorry prayer? Huh. Why don't you try to I'm sorry pray when the rapture arrives and see if that works? Well, come on now, sir. Why don't you try to I'm sorry prayer when God forbid you have an unexpected death because of your sin and you don't have time to say I'm sorry pray? Uh, the rapture comes, you're in the midst of the same familiar place that God told you to come out of 10 years ago. Why are you even letting him talk to you? Jesus. I just want to see if he's different now. I just want to see if he's talking about something different. He say he love me now. He say something different than he did before. Well, Satan do it all the time. Satan do it all the time. We talking about a vampire spirit that been here for centuries. That been, and, and then you come up and only living for like 30 years or so, 40 years. You're talking about a demon that's been there forever. Right, right. Then seen the presence of God. You ain't even seen his presence yet because you can't get out of the familiar. My God. Wow. You want the presence of God to fall upon your life. You want him to reap all the, all the financial benefits and new cars and new houses, new, new financial gain in your job. But you can't even sacrifice that sin. Wow. Why? Familiar will kill you. No, I can't look at a female behind while she's walking past. Oh my God. That's a sin. Amen. It's familiar. It's familiar. Because my forefather did it. It's holiness or hell. It's no in between. It's no left or right. It's either right or wrong. There's no, oh, it's all right, I'm a man. No, no, sir. You are a man of God. So you take a standard of righteousness. So everywhere you go, your conversation should be righteous. The people you kick it with should be righteous. Bible gives a commandment that you can't kick it with people who, in, who know they're sinning. They're believers and they know they're sinning. They're smoking, drinking, still having sex, and asking God for forgiveness. And they know they're wrong. Bible says you can't even kick it with those kind of people. No, you're not judging them. It's just that you don't want the demon to fall on you. Yeah. Because you've been in that place for years yeah. and months and been praying and fasting to get God, get God to loose me from that sin and that situation. But then when I kick it with you, I can't afford that residue to fall back on my life. It's somebody in here that got some residue. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That familiar is still visiting you at night. That familiar is still calling your phone. My God. Wow. That familiar is still on your Facebook profile giving you inbox messages. Wow. My God. Wow. And you keep asking God, where's my blessing? There it is. Wow. How can you kick it with Satan and then try to get blessings from me? Oh, and you expect to make it to heaven. These cats expect to make it to heaven after having I'm sorry lives the whole time on earth. How you gonna have an I'm sorry to God life and then expect it to make it to the kingdom of God? These preachers up here telling them, just 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 praise God. Just have, just give God the praise. He loves you. He sure does. Right in the pits of hell. <laughs> Ain't gonna walk past you when you're down there. And they got enough to be mad when you're in hell. Familiar will kill you. I need you today, people of God, that's listening right now. Don't you go back in that car listening to those rappers 
that talk about kill, murder, stealing your own brothers. Don't you go back to listening to the same dude that been telling you lies all these years? Don't you delete Facebook profiles? That's right. Delete numbers out your phone? Change your number? I've done it three times. And you'll hear God again saying, somebody that got your number, that shit. Delete it. Change. Familiar will kill you, and you want to know, and, and look, and you want to know when the Bible mentions about the hidden talents. What was God talking about? You know, we ain't living in an uh, age where they were just walking on sand and the flip-flops no more. Now we're connected via social media. So you could be missing talents and missing blessings because you are connected with somebody on social media. Y'all missed that? You connected with the wrong person even just on social media and you know they ain't supposed to be there. So every time you log on, you see your ex. Let me see if he online. I ain't saying that to him. But let me see if he's online. Wow. That's the familiar. And you think God is not mocked? Huh. He sees all. That's what we keep forgetting. A God that takes everything down you do. You're supposed to be. See, it's different for you because you're the believer. And therefore, your penalty in hell will be a lot worse because the demons will know you by name. It's different for them because they still know that they're in sin. They still know they're being used by Satan. They still know that when they call you, we might, I might got a chance of pulling her. That's why he called you. Because I did it before. I heard the whole I serve God thing before. I heard the all invite me to church, but you still invited me over. I heard that before. So I'm going to still keep trying. That's what demons do. Excuse me. And then the whole backstab my sister and brother thing. I don't like her. I'm a, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I serve Jesus, but I can't stand her. Yeah? So you think you're going to make it to the kingdom of God, right? So you don't think that familiar ain't going ain't to tame you when you get to the pearly gates. Yes, it is. Every time you talk about an individual and you name them by name, you send a spirit out. In the Bible days, Solomon had the power to not just move angels and God, but he also sent demonic forces out. Do your studies. He had power over angels and demons because of his empowering wisdom. That's what you're doing every time you backstab or you talk about another sister or brother. You send a demon out. And it, so if it's gossip and it's he say, she say, Amen. the demon make it is true. Amen. So now that person is going through with you unknowingly knowing. Woo. My God. Yeah. Because of your lips and your mouth. Yeah. That's, it. That's, it. Oh my That's why God mentions to tame your tongue. My God. It's an evil thing. Sometimes it's better for you to keep your mouth shut yeah. as people of God. Yeah. You don't know, pray about it. Keep your mouth shut. But you want to make it into the kingdom of God, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut so I can make it into the kingdom. The Bible say, I told Abram to go ahead and go there. He did it. So once Abram did it, then I was able to give the blessings that I wanted to give him. Right? And then he didn't even give, God didn't even give him all the blessings at one time. When he went to one land, he got a blessing there. When he went to another land, then he got another blessing there. He went to another land. Right there, he got he got he had a little hate on his side, so he had to have more wisdom and courage to tell his wife, look, Slim, act like you my sister because this king right here is gonna try to take you. Right? No, as soon as he got there, the king saw her, tried to take him. Said he said it was his sister. He was using wisdom. So then the king took her and was like, Your wife look good. Your girl, you know, this this girl that's with you look good. Long he found out later that it was that it was really his wife. So the king like, why you ain't tell me that this was your wife from the beginning? He just didn't want to step on toes because he knew that he would have got killed by telling him that. That's, that's the issue with you, people of God. 
You tell too much of your blessings. Wow. Yeah. Keep your mouth shut. Yeah. 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 You get blessed, be quiet. Right. Why every time you get blessed, you gotta take a picture and put it on Facebook? Yeah. Why every time you get the blessing, God bless me with this. That's fine. If he blessed you with it, let him bless you with it. That's fine. Yeah. That's it. How you boastful, God? Right. Give him some time. Good gracious. <laughs> That's a familiar place again because everybody's doing it. Are you like everybody else? No. Who's going to be at the party next with you at your judgment? You alone by yourself. You can't say, God, everybody was doing it so uh So you think he's going to say, oh, yeah, true, everybody was doing it, so it's cool. I guess we just got to suck a God, huh? No, sir. If he kicks Satan out of heaven as being one of his closest, he'll definitely kick you out. Abram was promised inheritance, lands, cattle, and he was even promised us falling in his lineage in obedience. Your obedience is key. Y'all heard me. Your obedience to God is key to your blessings. You want your blessings? Be obedient. Simple. He says sex out of marriage is wrong. Be obedient. He said adultery is wrong. Be obedient. He said less than the eyes is wrong. Be obedient. We all struggle to live right day to day. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. Trust me. But the fact of the matter is, either I love God or I don't. Here, let's go here. And then we're almost done. When you love somebody... You would do some things, some crazy things when you're in love with somebody. If you're in love with God like you say you do, not I love God like the Erica Campbell song got you quoting. I mean, not I love God, but you're really in love with God. Okay, I'm married to my wife, right? And with my wife comes rules. You can't taste and handle any other woman, right? You got to treat your wife the same. When you married her, you got to keep it. If you was opening the door before, you opening the door now. Amen. You feel me? Amen. Then, you doing things for your wife. You sending her flowers to show, wow. look, I love you. Regardless of, if it's not Valentine's Day, it's just a day. I'm just going to send her flowers. Wow. You should be doing the same thing that's with right. God. Now, if you don't have a mate, that's who your mate is. That's right. Amen. And you can't even be faithful to Jehovah now. You can't be faithful to your Yahweh now. What you trying to say? He can't visit you in a midnight hour? Are you saying that? So are you saying he can't fulfill your needs? Huh. So you belittling God and his abilities. Why? The same God that created the universe and all the physical around you, even the male or female that you're looking for. He can't fulfill your needs. Yes, he can. But you got to be obedient. There's somebody in here tonight that needs prayer. You still dealing in the familiar. And he wants you delivered from it. I done dealt with the familiar many times because my forefather was just a hoe. Sleeping around with women, looking at the women like that was fine. And it wasn't. Lust is a spirit. That a lot of men have. Yeah. Kirk Franklin talked about his coming out the closet. It takes a real man to talk about what your real issue is. Right. Amen. Because once you expose the demon, the demon can't hide no That's more because right. he's a liar. Yeah. Liars don't want to be exposed. Yeah. And by the power of Jesus, through the blood of Jesus, he has to go. This front is open for some of you right now. We got prayer warriors in the house. I want you to come up here for prayer. If you're still dealing with the familiar, you know that demon on your back. We won't pray him off tonight. We don't want you to go out the same. You're not going to go out the same. 
The front is open. The familiar will kill you. Anybody? And even if you don't come up to this front, you better not leave all the same. Tomorrow I ain't promise. Anybody? Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand and pray together. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, first Lord, forgive me for my sins and transgressions. I repent and I'm sorry for all that I've done in your sight that was wrong, but though word and deed. I should have blessed every ear that's listening to this prayer right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You know their personal lives, their personal situations. Let them be obedient to your voice. Bind the familiar spirits in their lives in the name of Jesus. And lose their blessings for the new land that you want to give them. The inheritance in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Bless them, God. In their obedience, in the mighty name of Jesus, and let thine will be done. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I thank you and I praise you. Amen.